Okay, in this tutorial we're going to talk about an application. Uh, this is not necessarily a basic Unix command like we've been talking about because this is actually a separate application uh, distributed by the Free Software Foundation or in GNU. Um, however, it's pretty ubiquitous across uh, Unix systems. It's found on basically as by default on all Linux server uh, on all Linux machines. Uh, so, and it is on de by default on Shamu. So you shouldn't have a problem finding this app. But this application can, uh, when used correctly, can greatly increase your productivity, uh, saving you lots of time. It's one of my favorite applications. So what Green GNU Screen is is a terminal multiplexer app. Um, so what what that is is you know it can be used to access multiple separate terminal sessions inside a single terminal window or remote terminal session. So this will prevent us from having to uh, SSH in multiple times if we want to be in different directories at once uh, on a remote machine. It can also basically give us tab-like features. Of course, we can get these in monitored terminals as well, uh, but this just a offers a little bit more convenient way to switch between tabs, and it's a lot more powerful. We can also do split screen. Uh, the real powerful is in the last two, I guess, uh, particularly in persistence. This is probably the one that you'll use the most. And I'll give you some examples of what that does and also session sharing. Uh, I will not uh, give you an example of session sharing, but basically uh, because, you know, it's hard to do in a video where I'm just uh, here by myself. But basically session sharing could be used if you had multiple users or if you wanted to share your session with someone else. It's a good way to teach someone the terminal so that other people can then look in on your session uh, while you're going if you're doing some dual coding or some, some other type of stuff like that. Um, I guess what negative, not really a negative, but uh, it's, it's released under the GPL, the GNU public license, which is a very restrictive license, uh, open source. It's the most restrictive of any of the open source licenses about uh, the availability of source code, binaries, uh, packaging, and everything else. Um, also, uh, uh, probably the most negative thing about GNU Screen is that the name is horrible for Google searches. Uh, you can imagine if you just type screen and some keyword, uh, it's not going to give you a very good uh, search result. So whenever you do need to search for some uh, functionality of GNU Screen, always type GNU Screen and some keyword. Not, don't forget the GNU. Uh, don't just use Screen by itself. Okay, to launch screen, uh, and I'll give you an example here in just a second when we switch over to the terminal, but to launch screen, we just uh, type screen, of course. Uh, to attach to a detached screen session, we'll, we'll use uh, R for the option R for reattach. If we have a, a, a named uh, session, then we can, we can attach to it by, by using that name. We can also reattach using the process ID. And we can list the running screen sessions with LS. And this is useful if we have multiple screen sessions open and uh, we need to look up their names to know which one we want to reattach to. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and switch over to the terminal window. Um, I'm actually running screen right now. You can see the status bar at the bottom of the screen. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of screen. And probably what you need to do before you run screen at all is copy over a configuration file that gives you that status bar. Otherwise, it's very difficult to see what's happening. Uh, so if we OK, so let's just copy over uh, my configuration file so that you get that status bar. It makes it a lot easier to understand what, what's happening. So uh, in order to do that, you just want to uh, you know, CD to your home directory and then uh, type copy. Uh, in this case, home fes788 dot screen rc. Uh, if you just copy that to your to your home directory, uh, it'll be there. So, in other times in the class, where whenever I use my username, you know fes788, um, I'm usually intending on you putting your own there. In this case, that's not true. Please, you know, type it exactly what I have on the screen there. Uh, home fes788 dot screen rc. Uh, and then copy it to your home directory. Uh, of course, uh, when I hit enter, it's it's giving me an error because it's the same file. But for you, it'll copy that there, uh, and then you can go ahead and launch screen. Okay, and you see you get the status bar at the bottom. So now what screen allows us to do is, first of all, to open multiple windows. 
So this might be useful if we want to be in a couple of different directories at the same time. Like for instance, here I'm in my home directory, but I might want to create a, a, a new uh, terminal window session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control A. I'm going to hit Control A C for create, and that's going to create a new session. So you see down there at the bottom, uh, there's a new session bash, and the little asterisk moved over to let us know what session that that are on. So I can create multiple ones. I can create another one, Control A C. Now there's a second one, and then I can, uh, you know, move to a different directory. So I can move to my Scratch directory, for instance. Uh, there's nothing in there, so I'll touch some files just to make sure there's something in there. Um, and now I can move between them. So the way I move between them is I can hit Control A N for next. So that moves the two back to zero. Control A N over to one. Control A two. Okay. So that moves between them. I can also go backwards. I can hit Control A P. So that's the previous. Control A P. So I'm going backwards now. I can also go directly to uh, another uh, terminal session. So if I create a new one, now you'll see there's three. So if I want to go from three directly to one, I'll hit Control A, one, and that'll take me there. Okay? So uh, let's, let's move into some different folders here that you, so you can see what, what's going on. So perhaps uh, I want to give these things a different name besides Bash. In that case, I'll hit uh, Control A followed by a capital A, and then it gives me the option to rename. So I can rename this guy, um, you know, let's say Dropbox in this case, and you see the name changes at the bottom. And then I'll go directly over to the third one, uh, or rather the second one where I was in Scratch, and I may want to rename this to Scratch, okay? Uh, so that's how you, you do that. Um, you can also uh, say copy, copy and paste in between. Uh, so this is text now. So the way you do that is hit Control A. You'll see a common theme here. Everything starts with the sequence Control A. Uh, so in this case, Control A open. Oops. By the way, Control A Control A toggles between the last window. So if I just hit Control A Control A, I'll toggle between two windows. Uh, so. In that case, that's what happened there. I did that on accident. So here I'm going to hit Control A and the open brace button, and then it's going to give me a cursor that I can then move around. So you see, as I'm, I can move this around. So I'm just using the arrow keys here to move this guy around. Uh, I put it on the, the text that I want to copy and hit Enter, and it gives me a highlight uh, session. So there I'm going to highlight file one. Uh, and then I'll hit enter again and now that's been copied to the buffer okay so that's stored in the copy buffer I can switch over to a different screen so in this case I'll switch over to three okay and I can then execute the copy button button buffer so I'm gonna hit copy control a and this time close brace and it'll copy file one in there okay and so this will be useful. This is not going to do anything. Obviously, there's no file one here. But this shows you how you can copy and paste text in between uh, screen sessions, or uh, rather in between windows uh, within a screen session. So uh, that's another useful tool. Probably the most useful use for screen, though, is the ability to detach from a screen. So um, you know we can actually, by hitting Control a d you can see that we've exited from the screen session. And the great thing about this is, is that runs uh, persistently in the background, even throughout a logout. So we could log out, we could go home, uh, we could log out today, we could come back tomorrow, and that'll still be there. And this is particularly useful for running some kind of jobs that we want to come and check in on the status of later or whatever. So in this case, uh, to reattach, we can hit uh, screen, and we'll use the LS to list it. Of course, there's only one here. So all I have to do is type screen R for reattach, and there I'm right back where I was. And you, and you can tell that I'm back where I was through the, you know, the unique uh, identification down there on the bottom of the status bar. So this is a real short introduction to screen. I find it very useful. Oh, I guess before I stop, I should. Uh, 
go ahead and say that there is one more useful feature of screen and that's the ability to spl split screens. So if I hit control A and capital S, now you see I've gotten a split screen. To move the, the cursor from one to the other, I'm going to hit control A tab. And then once I'm down there, I can activate any screen I want in the same way. So say control A two, I'm sorry, control A two will take me to that one. And then I can move in between so that I can have, you know, different uh, sessions open at the same time and see what's going on. Um, I can resize this, so if I hit control A and the colon key, then type resize, say 10, it'll resize it such that it's 10 lines. So I use this a lot uh, if I'm building code or, or looking uh, at some kind of passing uh, output of standard out uh, in this small region while doing some editing or something else in the, in the larger region up above. Um, if you want to get out of this, uh, you can, uh, if you hit control A, capital Q, uh, it'll it'll kill the session that you're in, or all sessions and return you to the uh, to the one that you're in there. So th this is a, again just a kind of a short introduction to screen. I have some additional slides here that basically just go through a lot of the commands. Uh, there's a, some of the commands that are most often used. Of course, I'll direct you to Google or the help pages to find a full list of features. But I hope I. Uh, you know, showed you enough that you can also use the, the question mark, control a question mark to get a full list of commands there. Uh, and then finally, I want, just wanted you to make you aware of, there's a, there's a newer uh, version of screen, if you will. It's basically a complete rewrite of the screen code base that uh, is much more, um, much more recent. It's called tmux. And uh, I don't use tmux because uh, the commands are different from what screen. I've been using screen for a while and I'm used to them. Um, but the functionality is very similar. So basically everything that I showed you uh, that you can do in screen, you can do in, in Tmux, except uh, from what I understand, it's much more easier to configure and uh, descriptability. So if you don't know screen, it may be worth learning Tmux from the beginning. And another reason is it has a much more flexible license, uh, BSD. This would be important if you wanted to package this code into some application you were building yourself. I guess one bad thing is, is that it's not typically installed by default on a Linux machine. However, we should be able to, uh, here in a, in a couple of weeks, we're going to learn how to uh, install software and, and, and you should have no problem uh, installing Tmux yourself. So if you're, if you're looking for a tool, you know, it might be worth learning uh, Tmux to begin with if you don't know GNU screen. Anyway, this is a short introduction to the new screen.